So our objective today is to um, create box plots and compare <coughs> sets of data using box plots. So everything we've talked about is different ways of analyzing data. So this is lesson 13.4. Lesson 13.4. <coughs> so let's see. Um, let's give a definition to box plots, and then let's see what you guys remember that we've talked about. What on earth is a box plot? So I'm going to give you his alter ego, which is the one you probably heard. Box and whiskers plot. And we'll talk about when we draw our box and whiskers plot or box plot, why they called it the box and whiskers plot. Um, and it's basically used to show the distribution. of data. Okay. It's used to show the distribution of data. So in other words, it's dealing with the notion of spread. What kind of things do we study when we study spread? Right. Study range. Yeah. Median. Not what we do, but not on this one. Interquartile range. Okay, so that's what's all important here. But in order to have an interquartile range, what do we need to know? We need to know first quartile and third quartile. Okay, yes, and we do need to know the median in order to figure out the first quartile and the third quartile. So, guess what? You guys have just gave me a bunch of information. How do I figure out the range of a set of data? We have the largest number and the smallest number. So we're going to use some more mathematical terms than that. And we're going to call them a minimum. We'll be using that term a lot in other respects. Minimum is going to be the least value. And then if the minimum is the least value, what do we call the greatest value? Maximum. Maximum. Hi there, you need to take a test? Um, Okay, yeah, just uh, find an empty seat. Help yourself. <coughs> Maximum is called the greatest value. And then we need to find the median of the whole set of data. And then we need to find the first quartile. That's the median of the first half. And we need to find the third quartile, which is the median of the second half. So noticing all the things that you need to find in order to do a box plot, and that's it, those five points. That's all you need to do a box plot. Um, what is it that needs to be true about your data? Ian? Uh, no. Actually, you could have a whole set of decimals. It's kind of rude, but... You could. <laughs> and these values could work out to be decimals, too. Okay, think about, in order to find a minimum, a maximum, a median, a quartile one, quartile three, what needs to be true about your data? They're not infinite? No. Nope. Yep. Uh, do they have to be in numerical order? Thank you. You need to put the data in order. From least to greatest. That's your first thing you're going to do in order to analyze this data. So think about it. One of the easiest things to figure out in terms of statistics is median. So this is going to require very, very, very minor calculations, which is really nice. So the main work is to actually create the plot, which doesn't take that long. It's a series of making the five point or finding the five points and then plotting them. Now we do have some rules about how we plot. So we'll talk about the rules as we go along. So let me give you a set of data. 
and they won't be in any particular order. Let's see, these datas, ooh, this is the number of runs scored by a softball team in 20 games, okay? So how many scores they run, they run, they ran, wow, um, in 20 games, or scored, let's just say that, number of runs scored. So we had three, four, eight, 12, seven, five, four, 12, three, nine, 11, four, 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 and then 14. So it's one four and then a 14. I was reading ahead, sorry. Eight, two, 10, three, 10, 9, 7. Now, we're told these are 20, so I'm going to double check and make sure that I actually have 20 numbers there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Shebang. All right, so what we're going to do is take the data and we're going to put them in order from least to greatest. So what's this? And I'm going to, this is exactly what I do whenever I have an assignment like this. All right, it's the smallest number that you guys see. Two. There is a 2. And I cross him off. Okay, what comes next? Three. Is there more than one? Yes. There's another one. And what? Notice that I'm lining them up, right underneath the number underneath them. So it should have twenty. Oh, there's a third one lurking over there. Lurkers. Woo. Okay. Uh, do we get all the threes? Yeah. Okay. How about fours? Yes. There's one. Two. Three, okay, five, let's just double check, mm, there's only one, any sixes, uh, sevens though, there's one, and ooh, at the very end, any eights, we got an eight here, and there's one more over here, nines, oh, there's, oop, come back here. There's one here, and one here. Okay, tens. A lot of, a lot of two of things, huh? Yep. One before the three, one after the three. It's kind of like Noah's Ark, and they came by twos. All right, uh, how about 11? One 11. How about next? Oh, 12. And it looks like we got two of those babies. And then 114. Okay. So we got all 20 numbers. Now, first thing I'm going to look for is the median. Now, the median is going to fall between two numbers because I have an even set of data. Which two numbers, or places, I should say, would my median fall between if I have 20 numbers? Chloe. 10th and 11th. 10th and 11th. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's going to fall between 7 and 8, which would be what? 7. So that's easy. So the median equals 7.5. Now, to the left is my where I'm going to look for my quartile 1. And I, again, have an even set of data. There's 10 numbers in there. So between what two places will I find my median of the first half? Between the fifth and the sixth. So one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, that's easy. Between four and four is four. So quartile one is four. Okay, same thing happens in the next half. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, this should be in that same stack. <clears throat> so we've got one, two, three, four, five. Oh, lucky. We are so lucky. Between 10 and 10 is 10. So our third quartile is 10. And then we're just going to identify the least value, which is the minimum, is 2. And we're going to identify the greatest value, which is 14. So that's your maximum. Okay, and let's see, anything else? So, 
I'm sorry, what? We could do that. We don't need to do it quite yet because I only need five points to create a box plot, okay? So here's the one thing I want you to pay attention to. How many numbers are from the least value to the first quartile? How many numbers are between the least value and the uh, first quartile? I see five, okay? Two, three, 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 and a four. All right, how many numbers are between the first quartile and the median? One, two, three, four, five. How many numbers are between the median and the third quartile? Five. five. And how many are between the third quartile and the greatest value, the max? Five. five. The whole point of box and whiskers plot is to split your data into equal groups of data. Since we split all of these into groups of five, this is exactly what should be happening every time I do a box and whiskers plot. I have the same amount of data in each section. How many sections do I have? Four. Four. We talked about this notion of quartiles. So how many cents are in a quarter? How, what percent does each piece represent? So you guys are talking through that one. This represents 25% of the data. 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 In other words, the whole point of quarters is to break your data into four equal groups. And now when I say equal, the amount of data in each group is the same. What may not be the same is the range of each group. So, for example, look at the first set of data. The range just goes from 2 to 4, which is a size of 2. For the next group, it goes from 4 to 7. Now it's a size of 3. And from the 8 to 10, we're back to a range of 2. And from 10 to 14, now we're a range of 4. So the ranges are different, but the amount of data is identical. Okay? Now... What else do we need for our box plot in order to interpret it? Is it just, do we just plot those five dots randomly in the air and go, whoa, we're done? No, we need some more stuff. Amy. Or Allison, sorry. Um, we need a number line so we can look at numbers. So we're looking at our numbers. We've got a range of 12. I think we can count by ones. And what we can do is we can either start at uh, 1, which is 1 before, and go to 15, which is 1 after. We could be exactly from 2 to 14. It really doesn't matter that much. And I've seen it all different ways. So we're going to create a number line. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So let's just add 1. We'll just do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, next, I'm going to plot all of my points, but the key is they can't touch the number line. They must be above the number line, okay? So let's start with the minimum value. We put a dot at 2, okay? My first quartile, we put a dot at 4. Now, it should be in line. And this is another time you should be using graph paper so that all your intervals are evenly spread out. Otherwise, your ranges won't match up with what they should be. My median is at 7.5, so halfway between 7 and 8. My third quartile is at 10. And my maximum is at 14. Okay. Now, that's not all we do for our plot. We actually need to draw a box. So because one of the statistics that we are interested in is the interquartile range, we're going to create a box that would demonstrate the interquartile range. So we're going to draw a line through quartile 1 and quartile 4, and we're going to connect them. We're also going to draw a line through our median. 
And that completes our box. Now, we're going to connect our minimum to our box, and we're going to connect our maximum to our box. So this is where they came up with the notion of whiskers. Okay? And that's how you make a box and whiskers plot. Okay. So again, let's go back to the notion of each of those sections, there's two whisker sections, and there's two sections in the box, represent what percent of the data, each one of those four sections, 25%. So if you look at your box, what percent is represented by the box? Okay, so we've got 50%. Alex, focus back in, please. So this is 50% of the data, and each of these represents 25% of the data. Okay? So the easiest calculations to make from a box and whiskers plot, let's say you didn't have to create it, you had to interpret it, is you could very quickly calculate range would be the greatest value, the maximum, minus the least value, the minimum, and we would have a range of 12. And then you could also do the interquartile range. And that would be your box. So the to the far right, we had, or far, yeah, right was 10, was our quartile 3, and our quartile 1 was at 4, and we have a range of 6. Brian. This is probably really unlikely, but if your minimum value was somehow the same value as your Q, quartile 1, or maximum was the same as quartile 3, would you just not draw a risk that? You couldn't do that. You'd, you have to split the data into four equal groups. So that would be having no group and then three groups. So it would, it would, that would never happen. You're right. Okay? Like, I would totally recommend that you do it on graph paper just because this spacing out is super, super important because of the next bit that we're going to do. Okay? Bastion. Uh, what can we get graph paper? Uh, I have some here. And here's the beautiful thing. You can also get graph paper online. You just Google graph paper, and you can print it out yourself. So that's pretty cool, too, to have, if you guys can do that. My only suggestion is be cautious, because it can come in lines any color you want, and colored ink is the expensive one. So make sure that you just do grayscale or black, okay? All right, so let's go on. Because what's really interesting is now taking two sets of data and comparing them. So what we're going to do is create... A box and whiskers plot, double, um, and we're going to compare the ticket sales in millions of dollars for the top 25 movies of 2000 and of 2007, and we're going to see which year was more profitable and what other kind of information we can find out, okay? So, we're going to have to do our plot, oops, let's get out of that, yep, let's go to black. Actually, you know what? Let's bring in the graph. <coughs> we'll do this one. Okay. So we're going to... Zero... Okay, I'm going to change. It's okay. You can do, anyway, we're going from 0 to 350 is our choices. So I'm going to... What? 350? Yeah, 350. But we're going to go count by 50s. So here's 50, here's 100, 150, 200, 250... 300, shh, 350. And we're going to plot, let's see.
Okay, so basically we're a little bit below 125, a little bit above 125. We're just shy of 175, just shy of 250, and we're past 325. So you don't have to be exact with this, but in that ballpark. And then I'm in it. Draw my box. <clears throat> And this is the year 2007. Now in the next one, we're going to start just slightly above 75. And let's go to, actually let me put him a different spot. Let's put him like that. And then the next is going to be just shy of this guy. So just to the left of the least value of the year 2007. The median of 2000 is going to be just shy of quartile 1 of 2007. The third quartile is just going to be slightly bigger than the median of 2007. And then the um, greatest value is just going to be beyond 250. And we're going to make our box. And so this is year 2000. Okay. So looking at these two, we could answer some questions. So question one would be, who has the greater median? And looking at those two, which one has the greater median? It's really easy because that line in the box is shifted farther to the right in 2007 than it is for 2000. So it's really easy to pick it. So uh, it would be the year 2007. And we could kind of estimate, eyeball the numbers, and we could say that it that one was about, uh, I'd say about 17, it's not quite there, 165, somewhere around there. We're just going to ballpark it. And then the year 2000 would be about, mm, about 125. So definitely we do have a winner here with the year 2007. Okay. All right. Um, how about which one has the greater interquartile range? And this one you don't even need to calculate. Why would I say that, Maggie? You just choose which one has the bigger box. Yeah, you look at who has the longer box, and that's the longer, that's going to be the larger interquartile range. So 2007 has a longer box than 2000. So it has a larger interquartile range. Okay, so that's pretty cool. We didn't have to calculate anything. And then let's look at this question. Greater, uh, or let's do it this way. Let's say compare, oops. Oh, we'll finish this later. So if we wanted to know who had how much greater, the ticket sales in 2007 compared to 2000, 
And what we're going to do is look at the maximum value. So the maximum value for 2000 mm, was about three, we'll just kind of judge it and say mm, it's about 340. And then for 2000, the max was about two, a little over, I'd say about 260. So we would say the difference there would be about um, 80. And then remember what this is in, it's in um, millions of dollars. So you would say about $80 million. And again, we have a lot of wiggle room with these kinds of problems. All right, good luck with this.